Logan Paul is suing Copizilla. This is about the crypto zoo. Logan guess. Paul is suing me for crypto zoo only a year after he thanked me for it. Rather than pay back his victims fully, Logan would rather publicly humiliate himself in court by accusing me of defaming him. He's hired five lawyers to sue me, which he hopes will stop me from exposing him again. You see, only hours before this lawsuit was filed, I had reached out to Logan Paul about a new investigation into one of his companies, which, oh, he's actually triggered. which has just been accused by the Canadian government of being a multi-layered fraud in Canada. I obviously had questions, but before I was able to get answers, Logan's team of lawyers showed up to silence me. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to go through this lawsuit. I'm going to tell you how to support us if you want, because while I didn't think I'd need help, I was wrong. But before we get to my mistake, <laughs> let's start with Logan's. This lawsuit is not about Logan Paul getting defamed. Instead, this is about him trying to dodge accountability, victims, and blame anyone but himself for his problems, especially me. This lawsuit says Logan Paul wants to hold me accountable for my actions. But what actions are those? Only him. Holding him accountable? It's ironic because his lawyers claim Logan has learned to believe in the importance of accountability. But accountability for who? Currently, Logan is fighting the victims of CryptoZoo in court, and now he's fighting the journalist who exposed him in the first place. Personally, I believe Logan has learned nothing from this except how to silence people with the law. But I won't be silenced because Logan's lawsuit makes no sense. We're going to go through it because from the beginning, there's problems. Logan's five lawyers tried to discredit me as a journalist. They paint me as someone who wanted money. They say I had a false and malicious narrative. But you know who yeah, I'm not sure about the false narrative, but doesn't yeah. believe that? You know who secretly praises me behind the scenes? This journalist, YouTuber, crypto uncoverer guy named CoffeeZilla, who's f incredible, by the way. A very thorough, um, good... No, so incredible when it does to him. ...hearted, smart guy did a deep dive into this project that I attempted to make called CryptoZoo. That's right, it's Logan Paul. He's the biggest enemy of Logan Paul's defamation case. Who knew? Because defamation requires actual malice and a reckless disregard for the truth, but he just admitted on camera that I am thorough and good-hearted. Maybe that's why he wanted to remove that video from the internet, according to the YouTuber who released it. The only issue that was ever communicated was remove this crypto stuff, remove this crypto zoo stuff. If crypto zoo is in there, coffee zilla is in there, I'm not gonna promote it. Yeah, remove that crypto zoo stuff, that coffee zilla, in the piss. zilla stuff. Doesn't look good when you compliment the guy you're trying to sue. Maybe that's why Logan isn't even suing me for my original investigation at all. Despite most of this lawsuit being a ridiculous fanfic about how I took Logan out of context, that Logan was a victim, that I withheld text messages, Logan isn't suing me for any of the original investigation, though, because he knows he can't. Instead, so is he at the end of the lawsuit, we find what my defamation really is. I'm being sued for two videos and one tweet where I advocated for refunds for the victims. Yes, you heard me right. Logan Paul sued me after I tried to get his fans, the CryptoZoo investors, a full refund. Remember, there are two parts to CryptoZoo, the NFTs and the zoo tokens, and Logan chose only to refund the NFTs, which is a minority of the losses, and I had a major problem with that. I told Logan this, I've stated over and over my opinion, that it is disappointing for someone as rich as Logan to not make things fully right, and instead only pay back a small part of the losses while fighting the rest of the victims in court. And it's those videos and tweet where I ask for refunds, which I'm being sued for. The first video in question is about Logan Paul not paying paying out refunds for six months. The second video was about Logan's partial refund, having a clause to make sure you couldn't sue him for the rest of your refund. And the tweet I said, yeah, I just doesn't want to lose money, that's all. He said, Logan's the type of guy to thank you for exposing his scam and block you when you remind him to pay up. I mean, yeah, now he's the type of guy to then sue you. Now I'm sure Logan doesn't like it when I say things like Logan's victims or Logan's scam, but I have a question. If they're not Logan's victims, whose victims are they? Even Logan admits they are victims. He told me via text, just thought we had the same goal of helping victims instead of a divisive social media war. So he agrees people have been wronged by his game. You know, the thing that he said will earn you money. It's a really fun game that makes you money. 
So how are these not Logan's victims? He, of course, would say it's his business partner's fault. But remember, Jake and Eddie have been out of the picture for years. And yet, CryptoZoo hasn't been released, despite Logan constantly promising it and, of course, also threatening to sue me. We're going to handle this ourselves while we continue to build CryptoZoo, and I'll see you in court. By the time this comes out, it'll be done. The game's going to be made. You're going to have and the video was so bad. The opportunity to get your money back if you want, if you don't want to play the game. The team actually did it. And I'm going to take care of the people who made me look like it, it, this was a scam perpetrated by me. Right. Logan wants to sue me and release a finished CryptoZoo game. But he's only done one of those. Since Logan can't blame his partners, Jake and Eddie, for this because they've been out of the picture, you think he'll take accountability for not launching CryptoZoo? No. This time, he blames the government. He says releasing CryptoZoo has too many regulatory hurdles. Maybe they should have thought of that before multi-millions of dollars yeah, maybe they should have released it. of zoo tokens and eggs were sold. And now Logan would rather blame the government than take accountability. Or if you let him keep talking, Logan might rant about internet reporters having too much responsibility. These internet journalists, internet investigative reporters have way too much responsibility on their hands that is being mismanaged and wielded in a really inappropriate way. It's honestly funny to watch this guy whine about, Doesn't that scare me? about his problems, which you can barely hear over what sounds like a private jet. Which brings me to another problem Logan has. If only there was no Copizilla, he would scam easily. Part of any defamation case is damages and proving someone has harmed your reputation. But isn't Logan richer than ever with Prime? And did he have a reputation to harm? His lawsuit shows comments calling Logan a scammer, possibly to suggest he's been hurt by my videos. But you have to have a reputation to lose one. And by the time of my reporting in question, Logan Paul was already accused of participating in multiple crypto pump and dump schemes. That article does not reference my work. So Logan had already had a reputation as what is that, a scammer before my investigation, at least if you believe their allegations. So this lawsuit from beginning to end is groundless, meritless, frivolous. And Logan knows that because behind the scenes in clips, he didn't want to get out. He's saying I'm thorough and good hearted. But in public, he wants to sue me, silence me and cost me money because that's the one department where we both know he's got me beat. We might have facts. We might even have evidence, but he's got all the money and the lawyers. And this is where I have to get to my one embarrassing mistake in all of this. See, my defense against rich people like Logan Paul is media insurance, you know, for frivolous lawsuits. So when I was sued, I immediately called my insurance company to file a claim so I wouldn't have to pay for it. But they told me they're not going to pay. They're trying to get out of covering us using lawyers in fine print. It's a long story that I will be explaining on my second channel because insurance underwriting is very boring. But suffice to say, I got Dylan Danist. I may have even gotten scammed. I'm not quite sure. For now, the bottom line is we have to fight Logan with our personal funds, which means I need to ask for your support. If you want to help and are able to help, there are two ways to contribute to our fight against Logan Paul. One, you can join our Patreon, which supports the channel. Or you can buy exclusive merch at coffeezilla.store, where we just released the Coffeezilla defense drop. That's right. Life hands you lawsuits. You get rejected Wait, by your funny. insurance. Make Is that So here's the deal. These shirts will be available for pre-order for only good channels. Only the next 14 days. And 100% of profits we make from selling them will go to this lawsuit. If for some weird reason there's money left over, it will be dedicated to future legal costs for this channel. I just want to let you know they're available and it's a cool way to support the lawsuit while also getting something in return. I didn't want to just set up a GoFundMe. So if you want to do that, just know pre-orders take a few weeks to get done because we make them after you order. And remember, you have 14 days and you can get that at coffeezilla.store. I'll link that below. It's coffeezilla.store. All right, now we're going to shift gears and talk about the final part of this lawsuit. Why did Logan Paul sue me now? It's been over a year since he apologized and thanked me. Thank you, Coffeezilla. I am very grateful for your work and your investigation. And I mean that. Thank you, bro. It might seem strange, but I've got some fun facts for you that may or may not be related. Did you know, six days before the lawsuit, I had featured Logan Paul in a teaser for a video? Did you know 21 hours before the lawsuit, I had texted Logan for comment? Did you know I told him he had 24 hours to respond and Logan sued me three hours before the deadline? Yep, 
That's right. Logan's lawyers then threatened me in that lawsuit email that if I report on this new story, Logan might hold me accountable. And Logan's definition of accountability seems to mean he'll sue me, which is why I believe this lawsuit was not designed to win, but to shut me up, to threaten me, using Logan's wealth and a federal court system without anti-slap to send a message. Do not tell that story. Of course, I don't believe that's the only reason I was sued. Clearly, Logan wanted to sue me for a while. Because he's going to court anyway. But I believe this new investigation played a role in pulling the trigger. Maybe Logan's team will deny this. Maybe they'll say it's coincidence they sued three hours before a deadline. Maybe it's coincidence I announced a story about Logan six days before. And maybe it's coincidence that Logan's lawyers threatened me about this new story while suing me for the last story that I hadn't discussed in six months. But I don't think so. Either way, when someone threatens new reporting in a lawsuit about old reporting, the effect is the same. So, what was this new story? Well, it's partly about a Canadian law enforcement investigation, and it's partly about something I told Logan to help him. Yes, believe it or not, I tried to help Logan Paul. To explain, we need to go back to when CryptoZoo first got exposed. Logan said he was going to sue me, but got backlash. So he called me to apologize. He said he was wrong and wanted to make things right. I made it clear refunds are the absolute right move going forward. And to my surprise, he agreed. A hundred percent, man. We're on the same page. But we so weren't. Happened? Logan now doesn't use the word refund. He calls this a buyback. But at the time, I need you to understand. I thought Logan was going to announce a full refund. So I began trying to help him. And dare I say, I was even nice to the guy. You can see that I tried to offer people who might be able to trace blockchain damages to refund people. And in the same spirit, I made Logan aware of potential problems at a different company he co-owned called Liquid Marketplace. On a platform that I co-founded called Liquid Marketplace, it allows co-ownership of top tier assets. So instead of one person, me owning this card, we as a collective can co-own it together. This was a fractionalized collectible platform where Logan sold things like roughly half of a $5 million Pokemon card. The idea was you could buy tokens that represented partial ownership in rare collectibles. Uh, that video, by the way, got 8 million views. And a lot of people bought into this platform. The problem was I had heard troubling stories about this company, and I was trying to verify if the claims were true. So I had gone to the CEO, Ryan Bahadori, to ask him questions, but he kept dodging meetings. And I don't mean he refused meeting with me. I mean, we would set up meetings and then he did not show up. So I was troubled. And I brought this up to Logan. I figured if he's going to make one company right, make them all right. Otherwise, it might come back to bite him. I mean, can you imagine the disaster if another one of Logan Paul's co-founded companies was discovered to have scammed his fans? Yes, Hypothetically, that would be a very bad look. So I'm thinking while he refunds CryptoZoo, Logan can push the CEO to talk with me and I can figure out the truth. Maybe Logan can fix it if there's something wrong. And you can see Logan responds to me. He says, gonna push Ryan to talk to you. Again, appreciate it, man. Now, I don't hear back from Ryan or Logan about this. So after a while, I follow up again. I say, let me know if Ryan plans on talking. A lot of nasty stories still out there about Liquid Marketplace, embezzlement, etc. And he's dodged meeting me already once. Now, obviously, the most shocking part of this is the word embezzlement. I need to make it clear. This is not an accusation. I am not accusing Logan Paul or Liquid Marketplace of wrongdoing. I brought it up in our texts because it is my job to investigate unverified claims. That's the whole point of me wanting to meet with the CEO, but I was stonewalled. Logan never replied, despite me reminding him again via email five months later that I wanted to talk to Ryan about, quote, embezzlement and, quote, potential fraud. Once again, not accusing anyone of wrongdoing. I'm simply doing my job at the time to chase down rumors and unverified claims. Without concrete proof, I would have never talked about any of this. But on June 19th, 2024, things changed because the Ontario Securities Commission revealed a liquid marketplace investigation where they accused liquid marketplace of being a multi-layered fraud, taking in $2.7 million from the sale of these fractionalized collectibles. The platform allegedly did not do exactly what it promised. Some of the blockchain tokens did not even mint. But even worse was the allegation that approximately $3 million was misappropriated from $10 million they raised of investor funds. This is a very similar claim to the one I had tried to verify. 
Ryan Bahadori, the guy I tried to speak to, was accused of, quote, making hidden payments to shell corporations without any legitimate business purpose, as were two other of the founders. And Ryan was accused of, quote, using company credit cards to buy high-end fashion, expensive jewelry and watches, personal health and luxury spa services. If only there was someone who could have investigated this sooner. Now, it is really important to say Logan Paul is not accused by the OSC. Only three of his co-founders and his company is. But given the history, I had questions. After all, Logan's promotional video about Liquid Marketplace is still up. And the reason many people cared about Liquid Marketplace at all was arguably Logan Paul. So here were my questions. And as I read this, it's important to correct. I say Liquid Marketplace got accused of embezzlement. Technically, the OSC alleged misappropriation of funds. Those are similar. They're not the same. So I wanted to correct that. But here's what I asked. Quote, did you take any action on hearing these allegations over a year ago? Did you get approached by the Ontario Securities Commission? And is it true that Liquid Marketplace lied about their claims of insurance, appraisals, and co-ownership as the Ontario Securities Commission alleges? You can see I gave him 24 hours to respond on June 26th at 2.03 p.m. And I was promptly sued June 27th at 11.28 a.m with roughly three hours to spare. Now, I want to be clear. I don't know the answers to the questions I sent. Maybe Logan, so Logan secretly whistle blew to the OSC when I first went to him. I don't know. That's why you ask questions as a reporter. But now the story is not about those questions. It's about why I was sued immediately after asking them and threatened if I reported about Liquid Marketplace in a way they didn't like. This is not how I wanted this story to come out because there's still so much we don't know and so much I can't say now for legal reasons. Maybe Logan's totally innocent. Maybe he surrounded himself with scumbags who defrauded his fans. Maybe he'll do a refund for this project. I don't know because I never got the chance to find out. I tried to investigate, but I was stonewalled and sued when I asked questions. Make no mistake though, this investigation is still ongoing. And you can reach me at the email below if you were affected. I will release my full investigation when it's appropriate because even if Logan doesn't want to okay. answer questions, it doesn't mean I have to stop asking them. So in summary, Logan's lawsuit is not about my original reporting into CryptoZoo. Even if you take this lawsuit on its own without context, it's an argument over Logan not refunding victims in full. It's Logan insisting he's not to blame. It's all his business partner's fault. But I don't think that aligns with the publicly known facts. That's my opinion. For years, so he just doesn't want to take any responsibility at all. Logan has controlled CryptoZoo, and yet the game is still not out. Logan is now blaming the government for that instead of himself, and he also blames me for losing his good reputation. But you can't lose something. I'm blaming everyone but himself. Thing you never had. Not to mention, Logan is arguably richer than ever, and he's on the record finding my reporting thorough and good-hearted. So this defamation lawsuit feels frivolous even on the surface. But if you dig deeper, there's an even more compelling story, which I personally believe, where the goal is to crush new investigations while taking revenge on old ones. In this version, Logan might not even care about winning. Legal battles are expensive. And in the world of money, he's got me beat. So he can try to silence me by weaponizing the law. He can sue me for doing my job. He can sue me for asking questions and he can sue me for asking for refunds. But it's going to backfire because I think it reveals Logan as a bully rather than someone who's truly sorry. Because Logan may be a master at convincing people he's changed, but I'm convinced it's the follow through where things go wrong. You know, the actually changing part. There was a time where even I believed Logan was going to fully refund victims. That's why I was so nice to him. And tried to help despite him threatening to sue me. But when it came time to pay up, Logan chose a minority refund and to fight the rest of the victims in court who wanted their money. And when I complained about that, Logan went from sorries and thank yous to lawyers and I'm suing you real quick. The irony is it was that same initial belief in Logan's capacity to change that also made me bring up Liquid Marketplace to help stop potential problems. And yet here we are. The company is now accused of being a multi-layered fraud by the OSC. And the CEO, who I tried to talk to multiple times, is alleged to have misappropriated money. This is despite me trying to talk to Logan directly many times as he asked. Maybe we could have talked about this if you had reached out to me personally, not my manager, Jeff, who is not me, 
Me, Steven. Well, I did try to reach out personally, and I got sued and threatened a day later. That, I think, says a lot about Logan's supposed change and his belief in accountability. Maybe the person he really believes in accountability for is not himself, but me. Specifically, when I try to get accountability from him. If you want to support this lawsuit, the best okay. way is coffeezilla.com. Or you can support on Patreon. Thank you for listening and have a nice day. Cool.